Uh, silvo pastures are functional uh, for wintering cattle just like they are functional for relieving heat stress in the summertime. In the wintertime you're trying to do the opposite. You're trying to actually um, relieve them from cold stresses in the wind. Wind is especially important and so trees are a great windbreak. Trees function very well to protect cattle from wind. And so a specific type of silvo pasture that's utilized in the winter would be termed an outdoor living barn which is typically utilizing conifer trees and in dense plantations or just dense, dense natural areas that are managed where cattle are placed during really cold periods of the year and the conifer cover actually provides a thermal cover. The idea with these winter pastures is that you don't put the cattle in them until the ground is frozen and you don't leave the cattle in there for too long. Um, these cattle behind me are actually out of their outdoor living barn because here in the Adirondacks in the end of March and April, the ground is starting to melt, it's getting soft. If I had them in with trees, they would cause excessive compaction and root damage to those trees. Also, the sap is starting to flow in the bark of the trees and cattle will be more likely to girdle those trees at this time of the year. So this is the one time of the year where I actually don't put them in silvo pastures because they'll be, they'll be doing more damage to the trees in a shorter period of time than they will do in all of the other times of the year when they're in a silvo pasture. So an, an easy way to damage your trees in a silvo pasture is, and, it, and your forage is in a silvo pasture for that matter, so any of your plants that you're trying to encourage, grasses or trees, is to put your livestock in those pastures when you have saturated soils. Because saturated soils compact easier and they also allow animals' hooves to puncture the soil and therefore break roots. So if you have saturated soils, you really want to avoid putting your livestock in during, um, during those periods. We have to be very careful not to beat up on our civil pasture areas because the trees are long-lived resilient organisms and they can tolerate years of abuse, but when we exceed a certain threshold of uh, damaging the trees, either through soil compaction or uh, damaging the root systems or possibly even girdling and stripping bark off the trees, we may not see the symptoms of that for years down the road. And once we see the symptoms, it's the damage is done. We can't undo um, the harm that's already been caused to the trees. This area here is an area where we bring the cattle in for a few weeks. When they come off pasture in late December, the calves are weaned here. We do across the fence weaning and you can see the, uh, the, the excessive uh, manure accumulation and um, denuding of the, the ground. This area will recover by later in the summer, but we would want to be careful not to use our soil pasture areas for this type of uh, uh, use where there's going to be heavy impact on the ground because we might get by with it for five or ten years and everything seems fine, but then we'll start to see dieback in the crowns of the trees, mineralization in the stem, a decline in vigor of the trees, and once we start to see those symptoms, it's too late. In the winter, our animals are actually staying on pasture, um, but what we do is we stop rotating them because there's not forage anymore, and we pick a sacrifice pasture that's sort of where we might be doing a project next year, we might be doing a building project, we might be planning to plant and reseed anyway. So we try to pick a place that we're gonna take care of because basically you have your animals there often all winter. It's very easy to bring water and food to them, but they often, it, it looks a little messy in the spring. The grass is pretty beat up, that kind of thing. So um, it really depends on the season and, and the climate you're in. Um, up here in New York, Usually late October, early November, we're thinking about stopping the rotation. It's really when the grass just slows down to a stop. Um, and if you're further south, you might be able to go several weeks longer. Um, but usually as that, that it's turning from fall to winter is when you want to think about putting your animals in a good place for winter. And that might mean the barn. We just don't have that kind of facility here. And they, they love being outside, so we just kind of stick them in a place. And I think the thing we've learned is to think about where you're going to want to trudge through the snow to get to. So often our paddocks are right by the farm road, so it's easy to bring the materials versus 
somewhere far off that we might have to plow just to get to, you know, when the snow gets deep.